All right, so if we want to take a look at the next one, the indirect method, we have to use something called Hess's Law. And here's what Hess's Law says. Hess's Law says that when the reactants are converted to products, the change in enthalpy for the reaction is going to be the same, whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps. Okay, so here's let's take a look at a problem and how this works. So here's our reaction. We got two moles of graphite plus hydrogen gas yields C2H2, which is acetylene. Okay, we could calculate this using the direct method and find the enthalpies of formation for each of these species. And that, that's totally okay. But we could also use several different reactions. So let's say that this is a three-step process. And here are the reactions below. You got carbon graphite plus O2 yields CO2, and you got an enthalpy for that reaction. H2 plus half a mole of O2 yields H2O liquid, and you got the enthalpy of that reaction. And then you've got two moles of acetylene plus five moles of oxygen yields four moles of CO2 plus two moles of water. And here's the enthalpy for that reaction. What is the total enthalpy for this reaction, for, for the reaction at Bluff? And that's what we're looking for. What is this value? Okay. So what we're going to do is essentially add up these reactions and add up these enthalpies of formation, or the enthalpies of reaction, and see what we get, and, and go from there. So in order to do that, we've got to manipulate some of these equations. Like for instance, we know that we've got two moles of graphite, okay? The reaction that only contains graphite is down below, and we have one mole. So right off the bat, we need to multiply this reaction by two. But if we multiply that reaction by two, because we talked about this a while ago, about the, the rules that we use for thermochemical reactions, we also have to multiply the enthalpy of that reaction by two. Okay, so let me, let me do that real quick. Let me rewrite this equation. So we got two moles of carbon graphite plus two moles of O2 yields two moles of CO2, okay? And then the enthalpy for that reaction is going to be negative 393.5 times 2, which is a negative 787 kilojoules per mole. Okay. All right. So the next reaction or next set contains hydrogen. We've got one mole of hydrogen in, its product, in the reactant. We got one mole re of hydrogen in the reactant. So that reaction is the same. So we can just bring that reaction over as is, and we don't have to manipulate it at all. Okay, one half mole of O2 gas yields H2O liquid, and that enthalpy is going to be negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, all right, so now here's the third step. We need acetylene to be the product. We have acetylene in the reactant, but we've got two moles here in, the, in this reaction. We need one mole. Okay, so one thing we're going to have to do, and also re acetylene is a reactant, we need it to be a product. So what we're going to need to do is switch this reaction around. So we're going to re rewrite this and have the CO2 and the water as the reactants and the acetylene as the product. So that means if we switch this reaction around, that means we have to make this a positive value because it's already negative. The other thing is, because we only have one mole uh, in, the, in our actual reaction here, we have to divide everything by two. Okay, so if we divide things by two, let's rewrite that equation. That gives us uh, two moles of CO2 plus two divided by two is one, so that would be one mole of water, okay? Yields, two divided by two is one mole of acetylene, okay? And then the oxygen, five divided by two, I'm gonna rewrite this as a fraction, five halves O2, okay? And so that enthalpy, uh, that would be a positive, two, uh, positive 225.98.8, divided by two, 
and that gives us a, a positive 1299.4 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and I'm going to put a plus sign in front of that just so we keep that straight. Now, one more thing before I start uh, getting into this, okay, and let me see if I can make this a little bit, a little bit neater. Now we have a half a mole of O2. We have five halves of O2. What I'm also going to do is go up here because we have O2s as fractions. I'm going to change this uh, two moles of O2. And I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction four over two. So that way, that way we got it all together. All right, so now what we're going to do is take a look at what we've got on the left-hand side of the reactions and the right-hand side of the reactions and see if there's anything that cancels out. All right, so one thing right off the bat is we got CO2 as a product, two moles of CO2 as a product in the first reaction. We got two moles of CO2 as a reactant in the second reaction, so those cancel out. We've got water here as a product in the second reaction. In the third reaction, water is a reactant. Okay, what about the oxygens? You've got four halves of O2 plus one half, which is five halves on the left, and then you've got five halves on the right, so the oxygens all drop out. So you're left with, this is this is why this is kind of cool. If we add all this up, we should have two moles of carbon graphite plus H2 yields C2H2 gas. And there it is. That's the reaction that we're shooting for. How about that? All right, so now for the enthalpies, all we have to do is take our values. So we got negative 787 kilojoules per mole plus a negative 285.8 kilojoules plus 1299.4 kilojoules. And that's going to give us a grand total for the enthalpy of this reaction. The grand total is going to be a positive 226.6 kilojoules per mole. All right, so that's how you do a Hess's Law problem. It's actually, once you get going, it's actually not that bad. It's actually not that bad. All right, cool. So that's how you calculate enthalpy directly using the enthalpies of formation and indirectly using Hess's Law.